in the Focus on Health, a series of educational programs highlighting current health issues sponsored by the Department of Nursing at Salisbury University. I'm Dr. Mary DiBartolo, Professor of Nursing and host of the program. I welcome back Dr. Chenaya Mysore. You are a neurologist at Peninsula Regional Medical Center. You've been on the program before, but you had requested that we do a show on this particular topic. We've done shows on stroke before, but you have some exciting new interventions you want to talk about. Yeah, thank you for uh, welcoming me for the show. And uh, I really wanted to talk about stroke because stroke is one of the major uh, uh, medical condition what we are having in the Eastern Shore. And uh, we are having certain newer things coming up like uh, last year, uh, like in July, uh, it was like interventions were approved for stroke treatment. These are the things I really wanted to convey to the community. Very good. We'll get into that because it's, it's pretty exciting, uh, some of the things that are planned or going on actually mm -hmm. since last year. But let's first talk to our viewers and tell them about what stroke is. Now you mentioned it's a leading cause of disability. Mm -hmm. I think you said it's the fourth leading cause of death when we were talking before the program. Yeah, it's one of the uh, a fourth leading cause of uh, death in the United States, as we talked about before. And uh, regarding like stroke, like we have almost like 800,000 strokes in a year, and uh, 600 of them are new strokes. And uh, once you have a stroke, uh, you have, you are at risk for a repeat stroke. So like around like 23 percent of the population, like the stroke population, have repeat strokes, like 200,000 in the United States. So. So it's a major uh, a medical condition what we are facing here. Mm -hmm. So maybe explain what exactly a stroke is. And I know there's different types of strokes. Yeah, stroke, uh, we define it as a, like a focal neurological dysfunction. Like it's a focal, like it's usually somebody presents with like a focal weakness. It needs to be focal, like a weakness in the face or weakness in the arm and leg on one side, or it can be a numbness on one side, or maybe they have difficulty to speak. These are the things which would alert somebody that they are having stroke-like symptoms. That's when you need to be really get concerned and family members need to know. Like as we were talking, like uh, we call it like a fast, like face. If there is a facial droop, you are getting concerned. And then if there is an arm drift, A, the arm drift, or if there's a weakness in the arm, and then if they are not able to speak or if you give them a phrase and if they are not able to repeat, then you are really worried. Even if they have any one of the symptoms, it is the time, the T, the fast, the time to call 911. That's when you call. Yes, them. we'll remind people of that at the end. It's so important mm -hmm. that, you know, because time lost is brain lost. And that's because a stroke is either caused by a clot, and we'll talk about this in, in more detail because mm -hmm. there's some new procedures now to sure. um, dissolve or remove those clots. And then, of course, it can be a hemorrhage, of a vessel that bursts. Now, those are less common. So maybe talk about the hemorrhagic type first, mm -hmm. the, the, the bursting of the vessel. Yeah, sure. Like uh, strokes, we divide into like ischemic stroke, that's the clotting, and then the hemorrhagic stroke. So like 80% uh, of the strokes are uh, ischemic strokes, and 20% uh, it's hemorrhagic. Among hemorrhagic stroke, uh, it's uh, Sub, uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage, that's the one type. It's due to the rupture of aneurysm. We call it as berry aneurysm. That's uh, one of the type. The second one is a non-traumatic intracerebral hemorrhage. Most of the time it's called by uncontrolled hypertension. So these are the uh, conditions which a surgeon usually deals with, neurosurgery, and uh, we get involved with maintaining blood pressure and other things. And regarding the ischemic stroke, uh, there are a few types of ischemic strokes. So one we call it as a large vessel atherosclerotic stroke, and there are then what we call it as like a lacunar stroke. These are small vessel strokes which are subcortical deep inside the brain, which are less than 1.5 centimeters in size, and these are caused by long-term hypertension. Like there is a medical a medical term what we call lipohyalinosis, which gives rise to this condition. And you can also have like what we call cardioembolic stroke. As you know, like people who have a irregular heart rhythm, what we call atrial fibrillation, they are prone to form clots. So these clots are thrown up to the brain and they give you strokes. So then that's when we, are, this is a separate thing when we need to do like certain other things to thin the blood. And uh, there are what we like, uh, in certain conditions, we don't know what was the cause for the stroke, we call it as cryptogenic. 
Well, also, one of the ischemic type you're saying is just clotting or atherosclerotic buildup mm -hmm. within the vessel that causes yeah, uh -huh. it to, to close off, correct? And, yeah. and that's the one that we think mm -hmm. about with all these risk factors, lifestyle risk factors that's more true. so. Yeah, the risk factors for the strokes, uh, the most important thing would be like uncontrolled hypertension and uh, high cholesterol, what we call hyperlipidemia, and smoking. So there is also diabetes. These are the risk factors which we, which are common risk factors which we are seeing in the community. There are many other risk factors like uh, people with sickle cell are prone for strokes. People with uh, sleep apnea are prone for strokes. There are certain, there are many other things also. But uh, these are the easy like uh, you can control your blood pressure. You can take your cholesterol medication. You can control your diabetes. You can quit smoking. These are few things which which you can really modify. These are the things which we really need to do to prevent stroke from happening. And the one thing you can control is, is your age, correct? Age. Get, being correct. older, you, mm -hmm. we tend to see these more in older adults. You know, what age would you see you're seeing these most at? Yeah, usually like uh, once you cross 60, then your risk doubles every 10 years. So that, that's what happens. So uh, these are non-modifiable things, but there are a lot of modifiable things which we need to look in for. And it's better to start those practices earlier in oh, life, yeah, isn't yeah. it? That's true. Because you can see strokes in younger people. Yeah, there are like a lot of uh, strokes in younger people. These are then you are looking in for like something like a hypercoagulable states, like if there is anything like they have lupus or if they have like a, a other thing like autoimmune process happening, or if they have like a heart disease, uh, which is giving rise to like a vegetation in the heart or like a clot in the heart or certain things. These are the things which you're looking when somebody is young, like you're doing like additional investigation when somebody is young and comes with a stroke. You're looking into these things. So let's talk about next what happens, say someone is having symptoms of a stroke, which can be the facial droop, numbness, weakness, generally on one side and they are they go to the hospital or to the emergency room they should call 911 911 and mm -hmm. go to the hospital and to the emergency room because you're saying there is very um, strict protocols now on what exactly is done it's all evidence based medicine mm -hmm. and peninsula regional medical center is a comprehensive stroke center so there's a very detailed plan about what happens when someone comes into the emergency room with a suspected stroke yeah so we are uh, offering this uh, cutting edge technology with stroke management at Peninsula Regional. So whenever somebody has stroke-like symptoms, so uh, what, what we ask, the family need to call 911. And so when 911 goes in there, so you would call the uh, ER, like, uh, oh, we have a stroke patient who is coming in, so code stroke is activated. So we have a team of people who are coming in to help with the uh, stroke. So what you do, the once they come in, uh, we are doing what we call NH stroke score. Depending upon the NH stroke score and the, uh, what we call like uh, indications for a TPA, so we rule out like indication and contraindications for TPA. If and the, TPA mm -hmm. is, explain what TPA is, it's a mm -hmm. special kind of medication that actually uh, can dissolve a clot. Yeah, TPA is a clot buster, what we are using to treat uh, stroke for almost 20 years now. It was approved in uh, 1994 and it's been used since then. and. Uh, like uh, as as I told, like if they come present within uh, three to four point five hours, like FDA has approved up to three hours, but we can do up to four point five hours also in certain conditions. Uh, so if if they present within three to four point five hours, then they are if they are uh, candidates, like you have to have like indications, and there are some contraindications if they are on like uh, recent surgery, then they are not a candidates because they might bleed because we are using a clot buster, right? So if if they are within the window, then we are starting uh, the medication. The goal is to start Activase or TPA within 60 minutes. That's the goal. So like most of the time we get in, but sometimes uh, patient might be aphasic. We don't have enough history, like whether patient is on a blood thinner and a lot of things. That's when we lose time. So as we are talking, time is brain. So we need to do it as soon as possible. So once they come in, we are doing TPA. So like you are doing a CAT scan. Sometimes what happens when you're doing a CAT scan, like you are rule out bleed, that's the first thing, right? And then you might see like what we call like dense uh, MCA sign. There's, that it means 
uh, there is a clot sitting in one of the major blood vessels in the brain. If you see something like that, uh, after doing the, starting the TPA, you take them to radiology and get CT angiogram. CT angiogram is a procedure where you're looking into the blood vessels in the neck and then the blood vessels in the brain. If you see if there is a clot sitting in there, then what you do, we have uh, intervention people who are able to go in and retrieve the clot. That's what we will be doing. And there are certain uh, criteria they need to fulfill, like uh, they need to present within six hours for the procedure, like a clot retrieval. And they need to have like a score, like a, what we call like a stroke score I was talking about, and a stroke score more than six. There are certain things which they need to meet. If they meet all these criteria, then we go in and we retrieve clot. These are the things what we are doing at PRMC now. And this would be after TPA, or and you give yeah, TPA I, after the CAT scan mm -hmm. rules out the fact that it's a hemorrhage because you yes, wouldn't mm -hmm. want to give a clot buster med sure. to a person that's bleeding mm -hmm. into their brain. That's true. So you rule out uh, everybody gets CAT scan because uh, clinically you cannot uh, uh, rule out bleed in the brain. It's not a physical examination. It's not sensitive at all or, or anything. So you do a CAT scan and rule out the bleed, and if they are candidates for TPA, you start TPA. Once you start TPA, then the work goes on. Like then you're seeing if there is still a clot in there. If there is still a clot in there, even while running the TPA, you can go in and retrieve the clot. That's amazing. So that's really, really amazing. It's uh, saving a lot of lives and uh, saving brain and uh, it's preventing a lot of morbidity. And many people, I imagine, um, will end up leaving the hospital with minimal disability, or have you seen cases where there's no disability as a result, no remaining I, deficits? Yeah, I have seen, even with TPA, I have seen people walking home, I have seen. So the most important thing is coming, uh, coming in within the window. So most of the time people, oh, maybe I might have slept on my arm. When, and these are the things, maybe that's the reason I am weak. So any of these symptoms like it's very sensitive if you have like any of the these three symptoms facial weakness arm um, drift or speech it's really sensitive almost like 70 percent sensitive for a possible stroke so we've come a long way them, yeah. yeah we've come mm -hmm. a long way and um you know of course if someone is diagnosed with a stroke they would be admitted to the stroke floor mm -hmm. um, and be monitored very closely that's um, true so once like if it's a candidate for tpa or the tissue clot burst from medication, if it's a candidate for clot burst from medication, uh, they get the medication and then they go to ICU, and after 24 hours they go to the neurology floor, the stroke unit. That's what we have on ILA field in PRMC. So the stroke unit, that's where uh, they stay until uh, they are stabilized, and uh, we have like uh, in-house physical therapy, occupational therapy speech therapy so and uh, we are looking in for cause of stroke that's what like now the investigation starts why did he have a stroke why did she have a stroke so uh, did the strokes come from a clot in the heart or what was it like a plaque in the neck vessel these are the things which we start looking in now people can have warning signs for stroke correct they don't have a full-fledged stroke yeah. they can have those symptoms and we call it a transient ischemic attack yeah that's true like uh, when uh, when somebody has these warning signs, as you mentioned about TIA, transient ischemic attack, it's a medical emergency. So they need to present to the hospital. Like they come in and it's again uh, emergency, as I mentioned, it's a workup. So it's, it was a warning for us. So he's prone for stroke. So there is a score, what we call ABCD score. Depending upon the score, we decide like, uh, uh, we start on the workup, like wh what happened? Why did he have this uh, warning sign? So you're looking into the blood vessels in the neck, you're looking into the blood vessels in the brain, and you're getting a brain scan, and then you're looking into the heart. These things will let us know. If, if there is a blockage in the b blood vessels in the neck, then you have to get a vascular surgeon involved to open it up within two weeks because it prevents a stroke. Because most of the patients who have these warning signs are prone for full bone stroke within a few days. So either way is treated the same? Um, yeah, either way, like the workup is almost the same. Yeah, so depending upon the only thing is, uh, yeah, so since the symptoms has resolved, they don't need the clot buster. Mm -hmm. 
Well, very good. It sounds like either way you have to be vigilant. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Like uh, it's it's warning you. It's telling you you need to be evaluated. That's the thing. Is there any family predisposition to these kind of things? Uh, there are certain conditions uh, or like uh, they are prone for stroke, like uh, genetic conditions like called melas and uh, cadacil cerebral autosomal dominant uh, leukoencephalopathy. These are the things. Uh, uh, which uh, they are prone for recurrent strokes. So there are certain uh, predispositions also. Just to know if you had family history. You know, you hear about heart attack has yeah. a huge so, family yeah, history there component. Is, there is some. So we always uh, ask about like family history and other things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, very good. So it sounds like there are some exciting things going on. You're saying since last year, this clot retrieval pr uh, procedure. But again, I think let's focus too on uh, stroke prevention. So what can someone do to really reduce their risk of stroke? Uh, the most important thing is like uh, lifestyle modifications, like eating healthy. These are the most important things everybody need to do. And the other things is somebody is hypertensive, like you're following with your primary care, controlling your blood pressure, taking your medications regularly. Hypertension is a major risk factor for ischemic stroke, that's a clot in the brain and again bleed in the brain, hemorrhagic stroke. Both are uh, prone to happen if your blood pressure is not well controlled. Yeah, I think most people think of high blood pressure causing the bursting vessel, but mm -hmm. you're saying it's also an important issue with issue. the clot type. Type also. Uh, the other thing would be like uh, controlling your cholesterol levels, like you're following with your primary and if your cholesterols are really bad, then you need to be on a medication or a di diet. If diet is not controlling your high cholesterol, then you need to be on a medication. Doesn't that have a strong familial component, uh, hypercholesterol? Uh, there are some uh, f uh, conditions where they are predisposed, yeah. So there and are those family. people diet may not work. They have to be on a medication, medication like a statin. Yeah, that's true. So statin is the most important drug which we are using now for controlling the cholesterol levels. So it's it, very important you see your doctor every year for your physical once you reach a certain age to keep track of all these things. That's true, that's true. And smoking, of course. That's true. Like uh, it's uh, very hard to quit smoking, but we really need. Like uh, we uh, we have a counselor where we talk to the patients, and we talk like whenever they come in, whenever they go to primary care, this is a talk like uh, quitting smoking. So it's a very difficult thing to do, but not impossible. Yeah, it's a they very can. strong addiction. It takes mm -hmm. several tries, oftentimes. Yeah. And of course, there's many resources in the community too. I know sure. the health department mm -hmm. has a, a very strong program on that. So smoking cessation, diet, which is tough around here. Some of yep. the foods uh -huh. that are prevalent on the Eastern Shore mm -hmm. um, don't help too much with that, but. That's true, um, and again, diabetes, as we know. Like, we always talk about diabetes, so it causes like multi-organ, so we have to be really careful. Do you talk cautious. to people about exercise, how important exercise is? Sure, yeah, the, those, it's one of the important things, like um, aerobic exercise, like five days in a week, at least uh, 30 minutes. So these are the things we always say, like when, when somebody walks in. But yeah, these are the things uh, uh, which they need to do on a daily basis. Well, it's nice to know we have medicines and procedures, but it's best to prevent a stroke. And, That's true. And mm -hmm. then the other important thing, let's reiterate one last time, picking up these signs early and getting people to the hospital um, with the FAST acronym, mm -hmm. which is the facial droop. Uh, arm, the arm weakness or the drift, arm drift. Mm -hmm. and the um, speech, speech problem, slurred speech or trouble speaking, and then time to call 911. That's, that's the most important thing. If, as you say, if somebody or like any family member or if you are having any of uh, one of these, any one of these three symptoms, you call, it's the time, time to call 911. Because even if it's just a transient attack, you don't know at that time until you get to the hospital and, and get the testing done. So mm -hmm. it's better to be safe than sorry. Yeah, even as you say, like, yeah, even if it's transient, like, even if it lasts for five minutes and it's resolved, you still need to present to the hospital. You need to go to ER. Well, it sounds like once you get to the ER, there's a very experienced team that will converge and, and very quickly determine the problem and get, get the treatment that one needs. Yeah, we have a stroke team in place, so we are doing uh, uh, cutting edge technologies like what's done here. We are one of the few centers in Maryland who are doing a clot retrieval. Oh, it's good to have Peninsula Regional yeah, here. Yeah, that's, re that's really an uh, uh, asset to our community. 
Well, thank you so much for being on the program and telling us about all these new technologies. It's always been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. And thank you for joining us for this edition of Focus on Health here on PAC-14.